What's up? My name is Andrew. And I'm Kat. And you're watching the Style Modified YouTube channel. Today, we're taking Kat's CT200H. Um, the engine started developing a little bit of a knocking issue on startup. That means the head gasket's going bad. Long story short, when you park it at night, coolant gets into the cylinders, you fire it up, burns the coolant off. Creates a misfire, and yeah, it just means the head gas is going out. So we're gonna start pulling this engine out because we don't really want to change the head gasket um, because it's a pretty much about the same amount of work, and she needs to drive this car basically tomorrow. So engine swap, piece of cake. You know, when you do the head gasket, you gotta go to a mechanic and have them deck your head or machine shop, and yeah, it just takes too much time. So we went ahead and bought this engine from JDM Engine Pro in La Habra. And they charge us a thousand bucks for this engine. So doing a head gasket job by yourself, eh, you probably do it for like five, six hundred bucks. But uh, yeah, we just bought the whole engine for a thousand. So first things first, we're going to start taking all this pretty plastic stuff off because I don't want to scratch it. It's, pretty, it's actually a really nice car. So what we're going to do is we're going to start taking this off, this off. We're going to take the air box off. We're just going to take everything off. We're going to take the intake off. Um, you can probably get away with leaving it on. But we're gonna take it off because we need to put that intake on the new motor because I had literally just cleaned the whole intake, took it off and everything. I'm gonna take this off. Um, in order to make the engine a little bit easier to work on, we're gonna go ahead and take the cowl off. I know on the Prius you have to take it off. This one, eh, you can probably get around it, but I'm still gonna take it off. So a lot of these are just these, these regular push clips. You just take a flathead in there, you pop the clip up, and then you take it out. Now we're gonna stay pretty organized. We're gonna take all this stuff. We're gonna put it on the table. We're gonna keep all the bolts and stuff with whatever we take it off from. Everything's gonna be marked because we don't wanna be chasing our tails at the end. But first things first, I already have everything open back here. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect to these batteries. So here's your main 12 volt battery over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen the ground, which is right here. I already did, I already loosened it. It's a 10 mil. So we're gonna loosen it, take that sucker off, tuck it in the back, good there. This is your hybrid battery, this big sucker right here. So, um. This right here is like your kill switch for your hybrid battery. So you just fold it open, you take it out like that. Um, I believe it just cuts it in half or something like, basically, so it can't kill you. So we're good there, we got the two batteries done. Now we're just gonna start taking off all the beauty stuff, uh, take off the intake. So let's go over the tools we're gonna be using. This is my standard Husky toolkit from Home Depot. I've had it for about 10 years. And basically we're gonna be using, I don't know, the 10, the 12, the 14, the 17, the 19, we got all 3 8 drive, which is a ratchet that looks like this. And then for the bigger stuff, for the heavier stuff, we have half inch drive. So that's pretty much all we need here. Obviously I got the, the stuff you might need, a couple hammers. Um, I love my ratcheting wrenches, so I'm gonna uh, go grab all the sizes I need. Got a 12 and a 13 here, but we're gonna need a 10, a 14. Uh, these just make life easier because you're going to be working in a lot of tight spaces and you can get these as you see these are pittsburgh these are from harbor freight real cheap and to make the job easier i got some milwaukee power tools i got my half inch impact my three ace uh wire wheel we might do some cleaning and then my three ace impact so we're looking pretty good here we're going to start taking this apart we're going to lift it up we're going to start draining the coolant because it's going to take a while to drain we're going to take this wheel off because this is how you access a lot of the stuff that's down there that you can't really see part of the harness. So we're gonna do all that and then we'll get back to you guys. All right, so we got all the beauty covers off. We got the cowl off. You know, technically we probably could have done it without the cowl. Now. We have to be very careful about blowing off the edge of the windshield when we're lifting the motor out. So we gotta be careful with that now. But we got all the room in the world. Now, people would normally take this engine out with the header on. Uh, we got so much room back here, we might just take the header off and leave it with the car. That way we don't have to deal with it. Only problem is the header's attached to um, the EGR cooler and uh, the EGR cooler wraps around the side of the engine, wraps all the way around to the intake. So. Yeah, take what you want from that. But the next step I'm gonna be worrying about is, this is for the math, we're gonna start taking the whole harness off of the engine and we're gonna fold it over here. See with the 
wiper motor. So we're gonna start doing that. See, tens, tens. Um, your injector plugs are right here, so you gotta be real careful with those. Don't pull the wires out of the plugs. Um, so yeah, you gotta squeeze the side of the plugs to get those out. You gotta get the coal pack plugs off, and you gotta wrap around the back of the engine, and you gotta take a lot of those plugs off. There's, I think, three or four back there. There's the O2, the oil pressure, and um, crank position. If you want, you could take this little window out like I just did. It took, I don't know, five seconds. And as you can see, there's some of your plugs that you need to get to right there. I got the oil draining and the coolant draining. What I did is I put it in this bucket. I don't know, it's, it's taking a long time to drain. So that's why you wanna get, get that started. Um, I just put a hose on the pet cock, that way it doesn't make a mess. If you guys want, you could take off this whole thing. We might end up taking it off only because um, it's just about to fall off already anyways. Shout out to freaking Valvoline. The reason why you might want to take that off is because you see down there, right there, right there, right there, those are all the trans bolts. You eventually got to take those suckers off too. So that's why we might want to take this off. We're going to wait for the oil to finish draining. It's almost done. Getting this harness off, there's a lot of like places where it plugs in like this. You got to be real careful unless you want to break these. Um, that way you can get them back in. So what you got to do is you got to go to the bottom and kind of pinch them. See, this one's already freaking broken pretty much. But if you go to the bottom, you see these little wings, you pinch them and then you can get them off. So we're going to work on getting the whole harness unplugged from the engine. Um, you got the AC compressor. Be real careful. I heard if you get water in that plug, you can fry your compressor. So be real careful on that. But I have my um, power disconnected, so we should be good there. The water pump you should probably take off because it might be in the way when it comes time to pull your engine off of your transmission. This motor mount, uh, I think it's combined with like 17s and then there's a 14 on the bottom. We gotta get that out so we can get the mount off. And then as you can see, you might have to take the reservoir off to actually get the entire mount off. So we gotta wait for the cool to finish draining. But yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be working on. Harness, maybe water pump, mount. Uh, I might unbolt the air conditioning compressor. Actually, I might do that last. And then, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of coolant lines over here we're gonna have to start working on. So after we're done with all this, we'll work on that next. So as you can see, I got the whole intake off. So the intake consists of one, two, three, four, five bolts. Um, the EGR, um, you have to take this plastic cover off and then you can take those two 10 mils off. So um, yeah, we did that. I have those right here. So the important thing about bolts, you see I always put everything back. All the bolts I took out for the harnesses, for the grounds, I put it back. That way when it comes time, I'm not looking for them. And then as you can see, here's where the EGR went to the side of the manifold. Go ahead and put those back. Now, um, funny thing about it is, we've been trying to diagnose this car. Obviously, we've been trying to do everything other than change the head gasket or the motor. So last weekend, I actually pulled out this manifold, cleaned it up really nice, got all the oil out of it. And look, there's so much oil in here already. This engine is just spitting oil. I think the rings are tired. She's, she's been burning. But I went ahead and cleaned all this too. Um, and you can see there's still oil freaking everywhere. I cleaned all of this like spotless. So yeah, it's a good thing we're placing this engine. We'll probably rebuild this maybe in a future video. That way, um, you know, these JDM engines, they only got 60,000 miles. They started having problems around between 75 and 100. So then this one will be back ready to go. We'll swap it back in. So the next thing now that we are going to tackle, now that we got the intake out is we have to disconnect the lower radiator hose but we're still draining a little bit of coolant, so we'll get the rest of that out. So we have to take this off, and then we'll just take this off, and we'll leave this all over here. As you can see, I took these off the throttle body. I went ahead and marked them. I put throttle body bottom or, or side, and then the other one I put up here is throttle body top. That way when we go to put it back on, everything's marked and I don't have to. I'm gonna put, like on this one, I know it sounds stupid, but I'm gonna go ahead and put, uh, uh, neck thermostat neck right here. This one's a pretty obvious we don't need to do that Then there's five I think 12 or 14s on here I believe they're 12s and we're gonna take the water pump off and then after that We're gonna really start trying to get the rest of the coolant out of here And uh, we're gonna pull off the reservoir and then we'll start working on this motor mount now this whole process. I don't know. I'm in it 
I don't know, probably a little over an hour. But as you can see, we're already halfway to pulling this sucker out. <laughs> what are you looking at, stupid? She wants food. Thanks for breakfast. You're welcome. She's killing it. Every part I've been taking off, she's been cleaning. I told I told her, hey, clean that cow lip. She went out there, freaking hosed it down. I gotta wipe it off, so. That's okay, we're in good shape. So I thought I was gonna leave this EGR on, but then I realized I eh, would we'll just take it off anyways because you know we were gonna clean it. But this kind of thing sucks to take off. You have to kind of feel with your fingers. So in order to get that big coolant line off, that's what goes to the, the lower radiator hose. It's super hard to get to and you just don't want to fight it. So you might as well just take this off. Anyways, there's a 12 mil nut right here and it goes onto a stud. There's another one up top. And then you have to go way down here with your finger if you could see where the, the the EGR bracket is, there's a 12 mil way down there. If you put your finger down there, you could feel it. You could feel it. And this is the concoction you're gonna need to get it out. But I can already tell someone's been working on this motor because as I started getting in here, there's a few bolts missing. As you can see, there's one bolt right there where my finger is to that hard pipe, it's missing. So that's the bolt you have to take out to be able to get the pipe off of the head. And then the bottom bolt to the EGR is missing. So as you can see, once we take off this one and this one, these two bolts, freaking EGR is already loose. The EGR is hard piped to the exhaust manifold. As you can see right there, there's that pipe and it goes to the back of the EGR. Now those are two 12 mils you're gonna have to take off. Watch out, there's a gasket right there that might fall. So we're gonna take that off and separate the EGR from the exhaust. And then there's another coolant line right here on the bottom of the EGR we're gonna need to take off. And uh, the EGR also has this group of lines and pipes going with it. And that is fed from your thermostat housing. So if you want, you can just take it off of there and you can take all that off one piece and don't have to worry about it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, EGR is off. So that hole down there, right below this line is the bottom bolt for the EGR. So if you do have that, I think there's a stud in there. If you do have that, take the freaking stud out. You don't freaking, don't put it back in, it's pointless. So it would just be this bolt and this bolt, the two bolts back there, and then the two bolts that go to the intake manifold. And then there's that pipe that wraps around here um, coolant's gonna come out of that, so be careful. Coolant actually came out of the EGR too, so be careful. Um, you, if you're like me, you don't wanna make a mess. So this is how I took the whole thing out. As you can see, I put the bolts back, I'm trying to be really good at that. My EGR is looking pretty dirty. So the, the cooler, I'm gonna assign that to you. I'm gonna have you clean it. So basically all you do is you take off the, ah oh shit, I'm pouring coolant everywhere. Technically, I, I was fighting taking off the EGR, I didn't want to do it, but it's a lot easier. Now you can take off these last two uh, coolant hoses right here. Um, you got to take off the fuel line. That's pretty easy. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, don't forget this, this connector right here. Squeeze in, pull that baby off or else you're going to break it. So yeah, connector. So now we're going to work on the fuel line and the transmission bolts and then we'll eventually, I've been dreading it, we're gonna work on the exhaust. Okay, we got those two coin lines off, we got that unplugged. Um, that bolt right there, you can take it out, but if you want, there's another one there you could take out too and it makes it a lot easier. It's really tight here, but I got them off. Up next is while we're back here, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the fuel line. The fuel line is actually right here, so you can disconnect it from the car side. It's got this little cover on it. It's orientated like this, so just reach over and open this clip, and there's a little door you open it, and you can take this off. It's like a little protective cover. Once you do that, there is two yellow clips right there. 
and you just squeeze both of them and you can take that fuel line right off. She is currently cleaning the EGR cooler. How is it? How hard is it? It's dirty. Yeah, it's bad. She killed a bottle of brake cleaner and barely touched the surface. So, all right, we got the AC compressor off. There's only three bolts. The top one is a regular bolt. The bottom ones are nuts combined with studs. So I took the nuts off. Then I took the studs off and our tool of choice was this is the same way we took the stud off on the EGR cooler, um, EP8, EP8. See how it looks like a star? So we have those. Now I tie your compressor up so it doesn't fall. Went ahead and I just tied it to the fan shroud with a mixture of the frame rail. I got all the bolts off. I was able to get five off from the bottom, two off from the inspection plate. There's one right here that's almost out. I didn't want the engine to fall on me. And then there's one more right under the harness right here that we're gonna get out. So as for the exhaust, I went ahead and unbolted the actual manifold and then there is a, like a bracket, I unbolted that. But the exhaust manifold is stuck on the engine because the engine slanted. So hopefully when I lift it up, it will free up and I could take the exhaust manifold and I could tie it to the firewall. I'm worried if I leave the exhaust manifold on and I'm not paying attention, we're gonna blow apart the freaking windshield. So that's why I'm taking it off. Now, I shit you not, guys, I seen the guy at the JDM spot put a hook on the freaking fuel rail and lift the whole engine up. And that was with, I don't know, 30, 40 extra pounds worth of shit on it. And I'm gonna, I have all that off, the intake, all that, I have it all off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it around the fuel rail again. If it looks sketchy, I'll, I'll put a ratchet strap or something, but we're gonna tie this sucker up and we're gonna hopefully get it out. Once we tie it up, lift it up a little bit, then we'll pull the trans bolts off, then we should be ready to go. Well, we got it out, no damage to the fuel rail, surprisingly. Uh, worked actually really well, a lot better than I thought it would. The only thing is it tilted the engine a little bit more than I needed. So when it comes time to put it back on, it's we're gonna kind of have to either do that or what we'll do is we could put a ratchet strap on this side and then use it to level the engine. Um, as for getting it out, we didn't have to take the hood off, but it was really close. You see we put a little scratch right here, um, but I just had someone stand here and push the hood up as far as it would go. And now we're gonna go in here. I don't like dirty shit. So we're gonna go in here. We're gonna clean everything, make it look all pretty. Um, get all this gunk out. I spilled a lot of coolant over here. It's kind of inevitable. But yeah, we're gonna go and clean this thing. Probably spend, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes doing that. She's still cleaning the EGR cooler. She's been at that for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the vacuum, do some cleaning here. So let's get this done. And uh, I'll show you guys the finished product. I've got this sucker pretty much as clean as I care to clean it. I've got everything down here all clean, all looking good. Transmission's cleaned up. Cleaned up the AC compressor. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of oil on that, but yeah. So we're looking good in the engine bay, I'm happy with that. Now what we gotta start doing is taking all the BS off of this motor. Um, the intake and everything like that, we're gonna take off and we're just gonna put it on that one just so it's out of the way. Um, as you guys can see, I did leave the exhaust manifold with the car, I have it out of the way. So that way when we get the engine back in, we just plop that back on. So put, leave the gasket. We'll take this one or whichever one's better. Actually, as you can see, this one was leaking a little bit right here. So um, we will look and see which one's better. Yeah, we're gonna take all this BS off. Motor mount, water pump, intake, harness, exhaust manifold. Um, we gotta change the oil pressure sensor with the other one, because this one's broken. Uh, the rest of the sensors we'll leave in there. They're looking okay. And uh, yeah, we take all that off and then we'll get this sucker hoisted up. Oh yeah, do we wanna use this? I don't know. Let's see the injectors in this one. The injectors are brown in this one. And these are blue. No, we're gonna switch them. We don't even wanna, we don't wanna worry at all about that. So we're gonna switch the fuel rails over and that way we don't have to worry about it. Everything's getting switched. I'm gonna look at the part number on this right here. And if it's the same as the other one, I am going to leave it. Uh, Cause the other one has less miles on it. So yeah. So we're gonna cut into time lapse of me doing that. I'm also gonna clean up this motor a little bit. Uh, Cause it's got some oxidation and stuff on it. So. That being said, we got some work to do. Put these motors right next to each other, we're gonna get to work.
So it looks like a freaking crime scene back here, but we got the uh, JDM engine and ready to go in. We took all the BS off. We switched everything that we caught, thought was controversial. We went ahead and changed the injectors. We just put new spark plugs in. We changed those original coil packs. We changed those. Um, this had a different part number. They looked exactly the same, but it had a different part number. So I just switched them. I didn't want to deal with any of that. Is it going to work? So we're good there. I changed the fuel line, fuel rail. Good to go. I put a new PCV on the last motor, so I put that on. Other than that, should be ready to roll. Once we get the engine down in there, we got to make sure that the compressor is out of the way, the exhaust manifold's out of the way. That way we could plug it in to the actual transmission. Quick pro tip since we're going to be doing this on a time lapse. If it, do, if it looks like it doesn't want to go into the transmission, like it's not going in, what you do is you grab a ratchet and you spin the crank the front nut of the crank it's a 19 millimeter you spin that a little bit and then it will align the slines and you'll feel it pop in so you won't see that on my time lapse but that's probably what i'm gonna have to do as you can see the engine bay looks great spent i don't know an hour and a half cleaning it, it looks fantastic so time to get this engine back in and then we can start cleaning up a lot of this stuff and getting it all back in the car you ready cat ready sarah's here too sarah ready. wore a white shirt to pull an engine good job <laughs> It's just moral support. <laughs> yeah, it's here. We're here working. We're having a good time. That's most important. Have a good time. All right, bye. freaking week later and I want to hear this cold start fire it up let's do it okay we're gonna do a fire up on the car but you guys know these hybrids they start for five seconds and then they turn off so I'm gonna show you how to put it in maintenance mode real quick so I'm gonna have cat no foot on the brake press the power button twice put it in ignition mode okay now you're gonna press on the brake okay now press on the gas twice all the way down one two Okay, press on the brake again. Put that sucker in neutral while you're still on the brake. Okay, let go of the brake. Gas twice. One, two. Okay, press on the brake again. Put it back in park. Holding the brake. Yeah, holding the brake. Okay, let go of the brake. Okay, one, two on the throttle again. Okay, back on the brake. Maintenance mode. See how it's in maintenance mode now? So now, while your foot's on the brake, press the start button. And she should fire up right now. Smooth as a butter. So now, now while this sucker's in maintenance mode, it's gonna run forever until you turn the ignition off. The reason why you wanna do that is because you wanna make sure, A, make sure everything's working, and uh, B, that way you're not freaking your car about turning on and off on you, and you know, it kinda sucks. So, Kat, what? how did it feel to change your own engine? frustrating at first when we changed it and it still made the noise but then you figured it out so it felt pretty good it was fun yeah it wasn't the engine sadly but um, we replaced it anyways her engine was burning a ton of oil we bought it three quarts low on oil so uh, we lowballed the guy in the car luckily he took it but bought a three quarts low on oil and we knew the motor was was going bad the rings were, were going really bad so just changed the whole motor and found out the damn thing was was still making the noise long story short when i changed the motor i put her old intake her old exhaust her old injectors her old everything because i didn't trust the new stuff right so that kind of dawned on me okay it must be something we put on put on from the old engine it was it was the injector so um cylinder three was having a misfire right so it gave all the signs of a head gasket because it looked different it looked wet the coolant level was low when we looked at it. It just head gasket. We just assumed head gasket. But what happens on when injectors start going bad, they start leaking. So when you turn the car off, the injector leaks all the pressure out of the fuel rail into that cylinder. And then when you go to start it, obviously with all that fuel in there, it can't combust and it misfires until it gets all the fuel out of there. And that's that. So another telltale would be if you actually pull your dipstick and you smell it, 
it will probably smell like uh, gas. Because in my race car, it happens to, I, r I run it rich and it smells like gas when you pull the dipstick. So yeah, that was it and kind of a bummer, but oh well. She's got a pretty much a new engine. What we're gonna do, we'll probably make a video later on. We're gonna take our old engine and we're actually gonna rebuild it in the garage. So we're gonna open it up, check it, put some new rings on it, new bearings, stuff like that. So Kat's car lives on for another day. Thanks, so babe. you're welcome, no problem. Yeah, new engine, who dis? Anyways, one well, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out.